Blood Bilge and Iron Balls by Alan Abbey, The Car Wars of Naval Battles in the Age of Sail. I've played a few games of this years ago, but moved on really quick. I want to revisit it. It's been a while since we've gotten out the seascape, and so we're going to do that here in a little bit. I want to start by showing you, when it says Age of Sail, it really means Napoleonic, right? I mean, Sail's been used for like a long time, so you got to kind of narrow it down a little bit there, Alan. So I want to start by showing you guys the scenarios. It's a really good way to get an idea for what the author thinks you're going to be doing with it. Look at this. The Battle of the Nile. This was a little little skirmish fought between a couple of uh, countries you might have heard of. Great Britain, France. And uh, I think it took place uh, near Egypt. And not a lot of maneuver on the French part, at least. I don't think so. Here's Lorient. If you've seen the painting, maybe I'll show a picture of it here if I'm not feeling too lazy. And so there's a lot of ships on the board. Now, so you might be thinking, oh, this is kind of like old Osprey's Fighting Sail. And I like Fighting Sail. We played a lot of this on the channel. Despite the warts, there's a there's at least one case where the example shown is completely contradicted by the text. You, you really need the errata. It's an, it's, you know, it's an Osprey game. And Fighting Sail is great. It's fleet actions. You can manage, you could easily manage five or six ships. Not a problem. Blood Bilge and Iron Balls. I think you could probably manage two or three. That's how many I'm going to manage, at least. At least in the game that we're going to see next week. And the reason for that, it, it goes back to... I, I think it'll work fine at that scale, too. But it really goes back to what the ship records look like. And, and this is the really the meat and potatoes. This will show you what the game really looks like. Let me, let me grab one of these that... I don't have the book in the way. Allow me to introduce you to one of the vessels that we'll be taking to the open seas in our next video. This is a French ship. It is the Surf Volant. 90 gun ship of the line, one of Napoleon's finest. And this is a little complicated. And this is why I want to go through how you play the game before we get to it. I've, I've made a couple of little little changes, a little, little show prep this time around. We'll get to that in a minute. First thing to understand is this is a lot like Car Wars in that you're going to start crossing stuff off. And the more you cross off, the worse shape your vessel is in. And so you got, I mean, some of this stuff is obvious, right? When you take blamage to your sails, if you lose sails, oh, see, so here's, here's very easy, ship speed. You can be at full sail, half sail, basically at rest, and at anchor. And it takes you a full turn, to, you have to spend a full turn at each of these. So I say, oh, I'm at half sail. I can't go to anchor. I got to slow down to rest for a turn and then I can chuck out my anchor. If I'm already at anchor, it's going to take a turn to get to rest, and then I drift in the direction of the wind for a turn, and then the next turn I go to half sail, and the next turn I go to full sail. If I am at full sail, I'm not going to be shooting as well, because all my boys on the decks, all my sailors, are focused on driving the vessel instead of shooting. So you want to be at half sail if you're going to be shooting at anybody. And of course, if I have three masts, I will be moving at, oh, well, we got two numbers here. Just just ignore the parentheses for now. We'll get to that. So if I'm at half sail and I got my all three masts, I'm only moving six inches per turn. Okay. All right. Easy peasy. But if I've had one of my masts shot away, now this each mast has five hit points, basically. So if I take five hits to my mast, then I've only got two. Oh, I'm only moving at four inches per turn. You see? Now, the other thing to be aware of is I've got guns. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I got nine guns on each side. So I can only fire out of those. And I'm rolling D6s to fire. And not a problem. Okay. Range is very simple. It's basically. Now, again, I am going to be this. The game. Let's take a look here. I thought it specified every uh, 1 1200 ships. Now, my ships, of course are 12400 these come from tumblingdice.co.uk i got this is the survolant right here you can see he's got the little yellow on the bottom because i didn't know that wasn't bunting i should have painted that white too yellow trim let's see if we can we do the thing there you go see very very good and then let's take a look at the rivals this is going to be the british vessel see how they're a little bit darker red trim so the british are red and the, the, the yellow will be the French. The blue and yellow will be the French. All right. That, so, so this is the Serve Volant. It's got the three. Well, I mean, it's got a little jib and a spiker, but that's fine. So I'm going to be playing at half scale. That means we're going to be moving three inches at, at half sail. And my range bands are going to be, hey, look at this. Pen and Sword ain't no Osprey games. If you go to penandsword.co.uk, it's like there's like pen dash and dot sword. Here's the, the cheat sheet. But what, what this tells us is that for our ranges, if you're at point blank, 
Then you roll a d6. Each cannon rolls a d6, and on a two through six, you get a hit. We'll talk about hits in a little bit. Up to three inches for us, because we're playing at half scale. We're going to squeeze a four-foot table onto a two-foot space. You're hitting on threes. And then basically every every range band is six inches, up to a six, and then beyond 24 inches, you can't shoot. Or 12 inches, as is the case on my table. So it's so pretty simple. All nine of these are going to get to fire. But where the game really starts to shine is that it has, unlike Fighting Sail, which really just has, like, are you good, are you hurt, right? It's got basically, like, two different wound statuses. And this, when you take damage, you're going to draw a card, and there is all kinds of opportunity for what you gets hit. Is it your hull? Do you lose a gun? Does your sail take damage? And as you lose your hull, if you cross off this last one, you strike colors. It doesn't mean the ship is sunk. It just means everybody is too busy trying to repair the damage to do fighting, and you just surrender the vessel rather than have everybody else die. These stars here are very important. See, the captain, this is your leadership. And if you have damage to this star, your guys aren't going to be fighting as well as they would. Likewise, with this star here, this is your gunnery sergeant. I, he's not actually called a gunnery. He's called the gunnery master, I think. And the good news is he can take one hit and keep on fighting. And it's not just one guy. It's the whole gunnery, like, officer corps. If you lose both of these, though, then, oh my goodness, your cannons are going to be limited in what they can do. Likewise, with the sailing master. So that's where the parentheses come in. If you take two damage to your sailing master, then your maximum speed is reduced. If I have all three masts but no sailing master, I'm only moving four inches per turn. Likewise, this the this sea this C down here, not to be confused with the sea that surrounds your vessel, the sea is the carpenter. And so if your carpenter is dead, then it's going to be harder for you to effect repairs on your ship. These little snowflakes down here, these are called stars. These are your ship's crew. Every time you take damage, you'd cross one of these off, and then there's a chance that you could lose a lot of these. Okay, so that's kind of what the ship's record sheet looks like. And this is a really interesting part here. Fire was very terrifying. There's a chance that your ship catches fire. And then when it does, blink, blink, you put a little X here. And then every turn that that fire rages out of control, that rages without being put out, you put another X. Now, you're going to want to use pencil in this game. Because if you get up to here, and then, oh, there, there, here, here you go. You're taking an extra damage every turn. And then here, there's a good, you're taking two damage and, and by two damage, I'll show you in a second. But basically, this is very bad news because you roll a d6, and like if I've got these filled up, if I've got like four fires on my ship, at the end of every turn, I'm rolling a d6, and there is a four out of six chance that my ship just goes full Lorient. Kablooey! All hands blown to smithereens. Okay, so a couple of things to be aware of. If your leaders are down, there is a, a, a thing that happens where your, your ship just doesn't operate as effectively. You cannot fire broadsides. You have to fire ragged broadsides. So in that case, what you do is I say, okay, there's a ship over here. He's really close. I want to fire a broadside, but I don't have my leadership intact. So I have to roll. Let's say I've got six cannons left. I roll a D6 for each cannon, and there's a 50-50 chance that they didn't get the message, that the orders weren't conveyed. The powder monkeys didn't monkey. And so the, half of those guns simply aren't going to fire. Now, you could get lucky and all of them fire, but there's a very slim chance of that. So that's kind of interesting. You don't have nearly as much control over this vessel as you do in fighting sail. Movement also adheres a lot more to the way that vessels need to be concerned about things like wind direction. One last little star I want to show you. This is your steerage, and it can take one, two, three, four points. When you lose that fourth point, you can't make any more turns. That could be a problem. So you see that as your systems start failing, you're going to want to send damage control parties. And for every star that you've got crew left in at the in the repair phase, we'll talk about turn order. Just be patient. There's a lot to cover. It's a really intricate game. A lot of things fit together really well. So if I've got five stars left and it's time to fix my ship, I can nominate five systems. I can allocate my repair crews to those five systems. I want to fix my masts. I might want to get a gun back into shape. I might want to get my, you know, focus on getting my uh, orders where they need to be. Putting out fires is going to be very important, but I've only got so many guys. 
So there's a lot of options in this game. And I think this could make a fantastic convention game because you could easily give a guy two ships to manage or just the one ship is enough to handle. So with all of that said about the record sheet, now that you see how the record sheet works, oh, I should, there's one last thing I should point out. When you lose a mast, so if I've only taken four damage to this front mast, I can repair that. But once the mast is fallen, it's done. I can't fix it anymore. The best I can do is manage a mast that's still in place. Likewise with my hull, if I've taken a couple of shots to my hull, so I take one, two, three, and I put damage control on it, and I'm able to fix one, two, three, that's fine. But if I hit this gray box, this cannot be fixed. So once I get to this point, I can't get the ship back up above that. No matter how many repair crews I get, I'm going to have to go to dry dock. I'm going to have to haul her out of the water, keel her over so I can get to it. She's hit below the water line. Nothing I can do. So a lot going on here, but really sophisticated way of managing an individual ship and keeping track of all of those ship systems and allowing for degradation of your ability to fight. It's not just you can shoot, shoot at half or shoot at zero. As you lose guns, you may be shooting at eight of them instead of nine and then seven and then six. So let's take a look at the turn order. It's pretty simple. I have used the five cent chips, BB and IB. Blood Bill's Iron Balls, there are six of them here because I've got two different sides. And if we turn them over, we see blue repair. So for the case of our game, this would be the French are going to do their repair phase. You know what that means now. Flip over another one. Oh, look, the blue ship now gets to fire. The French are shooting. Now the, and let's see, I got a little red paint. I tried painting these, but I still don't have any depth perception. So red repair, and then red fires, and then red gets to move, and then finally blue gets to move. So you can see, oh, let me turn that right side up. So you can see it's, it's an interesting card draw mechanic, and if you were playing this in a convention game or with a group of your friends, if you have friends, congratulations, please don't rub it in, then every turn is going to be different, but in any given turn, everybody gets to do the same things. You just don't get to pick when you, get, when you want to do them. So pretty simple, pretty easy. I kind of like that. Surprises, it keeps you on your toes, keeps you in the game, and it means that you're never going to have to sit. It's one of those modified I go, you go. Very, very nice. Get yourself a deck of cards. If you don't have one, I'm kind of embarrassed for you, to be honest with you. Uh, you know, I, looking at this cheat sheet, I should point out, if your gunner is killed, you're at minus one on all of your firing, which means you will not be able to target anyone beyond 18 inches. So protect those gunners. In addition to the ragged broadsides, if you have command star damage, you haven't, repair, quote, repaired it, which the repairs really just mean reestablishing your lines of command, getting to where we need to go. Oh, you, the first mate is down. We need to find the second mate, pull him off of his current task, and get him back up on the poop deck. That kind of thing is going on. That's what we mean by repair. Okay, now we can talk about damage, I think. So you fire your gun, and you hit. As I mentioned, delete one pip from a star. So this crew star, you start on one side and you fill up one star, and then you just keep working your way down. So once you've crossed off the seventh, that star is out of here. Uh, the one pip happens, and then you draw a card. And the card will tell you, this is where the real meat and potatoes of the combat comes from. This card will tell you what happens. So I took three shots from the cannon. So I have to draw three cards. And if we take a closer look at this, what we find is that diamonds mean command damage, spades mean the guns have taken damage, clubs mean the rigging, or sails, and hearts means the hulls. Now we do have the joker. Oh! Explosion. Lose five crew. Draw five more damage cards. Oh! On the black joker, Inferno, advance all fires two points and start three new fires. If there are no current fires, start four at level one. So those jokers, bang, 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 you're going to need to put out four fires. That's going to be a real problem. But let's take a look at what happens. So on the case of twos and threes, in all cases, a fire starts. In the case of four to seven, you lose one thing. So steerage, one gun and crew, one mast, and one hull box. The aces are terrifying. One section of marines, oh, we'll talk about marines in a second. On the ace of spades, the gunner is killed. If the gunner is already dead, 
then two more guns and three crew are gone. And again, anytime it says a crew, that's that's one of these little pips on the snowflake. On the clubs, the sailing master is killed. Oh, that's going to be a problem. And in this case, for the hearts, uh, heart ace of hearts, the carpenter is killed. If he's dead, then three hull boxes and three crew. So there is stacking damage here, right? So if I take three points, now the other thing that's interesting that fascinates me is you have to do it one at a time. So you don't draw three cards and then cross all this stuff off. Instead, what happens is I do two. Okay, so I have one fire. Got it. And then I draw the Ace of Clubs. And, and the order is important because the Ace of Clubs now, Sailing Master is killed. And then I draw the Eight. So on the Eight, I get three crew killed. Now the order is important because if I already have the one fire started and I draw that Joker, the Black Joker... Advance all fires two points and start three new fires. That means that I don't get to pick and choose what order that comes in. Like, I, I have to do the one at a time, right? So if my sailing master is killed, and then I draw this an, another one of those... If Well, I guess that's not going to happen, right? If, if my sa gunner is killed... Oh, you're not going to draw two ace of spades, are you? All right, so, so forget that. And instead, turn your attention to this little movement chart. In Fighting Sail, if you started off with the wind at your back, there was a chance that you could kind of do a Yui and sail upwind a little bit. Now, the next turn, you'd be facing the wind, and it was unlikely that you'd move. But even if you were facing the wind, there was a chance that you could scoot forward a little bit. That doesn't happen in Blood Bilge and Iron Balls. Instead, wind is way more important. You have to manage this really carefully. Because if you are... So, let's... Do, I, you know, I, if the wind is shifting around in these directions, it determines how fast you can move. It's easier for me to think about if I get this out of the way. And I actually made a little wind gauge. Looks a little something like this. We're going to line this up. I'm moving in this direction. If the wind is from any of these directions... I, let me fix that. There, there we go. Hey, now we can see. I'm going to use my pen to show you. If the wind is hitting my vessel... At any angle up to there, yes, safety systems. It's I'm a safety guy at work. What can I tell you? Anything here, you move at full speed. As the wind shifts around this way, or alternatively, if our vessel moves, because the wind's not going to shift, okay? It can, but you know, that's an optional rule. We might not use that because it complicates matter. If I move my vessel around, so wind is from the south, so as long as I'm in this direction, I can move full speed. But the minute that this line here passes beyond a line facing due south. Now, I can only move at two-thirds speed. As my vessel continues to turn, and we'll talk about how to turn here in a second, once this line shifts beyond the, call it vertical, as we look at it, now I'm only moving at half speed. I can move into the wind, but I'm moving at half speed. And then as we continue, once we get, so this line here, and look at look how clever I am. I did it on both sides to make it easy, okay? So if the wind is out of this direction, but that's not the case here. The wind is out of this direction. So once this line gets past the vertical as you look at it, now I can't move at all. All I can do is drift, and I can turn until I get back into position. And that means that it, it, I am able to, to do things like tack against the wind. It's going to take some time, but I can do that. And one of the reasons I'll point out a brief aside. One of the reasons I haven't come back to this sooner is that I didn't like the turn gauge. And I had to spend some time. They look like this. This is how you can turn, think of it as clock faces, from, from 12 to 1 to 2 to 3. I didn't, know how, I didn't like that. He, they, he says, oh, make this little horseshoe thing, because then you can go left, right. Yeah, okay, that's fine. Turning one point means turning 30 degrees. So instead, what I did is I lopped 30 degrees off of my little wind gauge here and when it's time to turn you can turn and i had to look it up you can turn three points into the wind all right so here we are looking like this and remember the wind is from the south okay so if i want to turn into the wind and look at once again i put it on either side so i I'm, i line up this line straight i can turn once and then I can turn two points into the wind, but that's it. Now, on the other hand, because the wind is so helpful, 
If I want to turn in the other direction, I can turn once, I can turn twice, and I can turn three times a lady because the wind is shoving me around. That's at the start of the turn. What if I want to tack? Well, the first thing I have to do, and I, I really like this, it's a long, slow, complicated process. I don't recommend it. You get to the point that you are just, so here, remember, this is our, this is our line, okay, right here. And so right now, where's our line? That the, so the wind is in this direction, right? So I can move half. I get to the point where I can still just barely move half. And, the, and I've already moved at this point, okay? On my next turn, I can do my half move, and I can turn once, and I can turn twice, and then I'm done. And I've my captain, what's great is, remember... My captain is giving the orders here. Because he gave the orders to attack, I can continue. If he gets killed on this turn, I get shot at and he dies. My crew at least is smart enough to carry on with those orders. On the next turn, I'm going to be able to turn once and twice and three turns. And that puts me just barely into the point where I'm now at the, hey, I can move one half actually it's actually i think i think you only let me think about this yeah you you, you get them just into the uh, let me show you on the diagram it might make a little more sense and, and i obviously i need to review this as i said haven't played it in a long time so so here you go so here's step one you, the wind is coming out of the north this time so you, at the end of the turn you're just barely like making any headway whatsoever on the next turn you're going to make a full move forward Get you in focus there. Very good. So I'm I'm now facing and I so this is the direction we were in. I make a full move forward, which really means half because we're at half speed, and then we turn to face directly into the wind, and then on the next turn. So really, this is normal movement, and then we begin our tacking. Begin the movement phase by continuing the turn by taking two further turns across the wind. So that now puts you to where you've crossed over the wind and now you're making headway in that direction so in this manner you can slowly sail at half speed so if we're here and the wind is in this direction we can sail at half speed Uh oh we're running out of ocean we better do the thing where we're at half speed we make the two turn two two turns to the point directly into the wind and then oh i see because it's two and then we make the we don't move on this next turn we turn the two, and now we're once again sailing into the wind. So unlike, so this is right, it takes two two to turn, two, six turns to get to here. And whereas if I was here and I wanted to get to there because I got the wind at my back, boom, one turn. So it is very slow to move against the wind. Wind is going to be very important. We may do that thing where we have to shift the battlefield around. But that's really interesting. You have to adopt the mindset of a sailing vessel well, the sailing master, the captain, really, because he's the guy giving the orders, right? And and it's a little more complicated, but I think it's a little more authentic. And it's really fascinating to me how well Alan has managed the cognitive load for running this highly sophisticated piece of technological uh, uh, equipment, this, this wonder of the world, these sailing vessels, and to, to do it under such pressure, literally life or death situations as you go. Now there are, it just fascinates me. I'm just so utterly fascinated by this, by this genre of miniature wargaming. The book does include, first of all, it includes all of the named ships from the, the, the Battle of the Nile, which is nice. So you can play the HMS Defense with a C, but it has a couple of blank records, and that's what I've done. If you go to penandsword.co.uk, you can download these blank records, which is very nice. You can print off this handy-dandy cheat sheet, which we will be using. And, of course, there's also a bunch of, like, uh, optional rules. So, so look at this. Here we got shoals or islands. And, and the interesting thing is, it's not like island and then nothing. In the case of, let's zoom in on that a little bit here, okay? So this is our island. 
every inch away from the island. Remember, the island doesn't just, it's not just a pole with a top chopped off. If you get anywhere near that thing, there's a chance you run aground. And so any move where you pass within six inches of the island, you have to roll a D6 or run aground. If you're within five inches, it's on a five or a six. If it's four inches, it's four or a six, right? Right across the board. And and so the the island extends outwards. I think that's really interesting. Now, for us, of course, it'll be a half an inch. And, of course, the island blocks the line of sight, giving you a little bit of terrain. If you do have a submerged shoal, then this is like shallows. And there are rules for smaller vessels have a plus one to this roll, which means they can get a little bit closer. They have less of a draft. They don't sink as deep into the water. So where a large vessel will run aground on the shallows, right, South China Sea type, on a three or better, the the lighter vessels will only run aground on a four or better, meaning it's a viable option to run away by crossing that shoal. I'm not going to use that rule, at least not in this next battle, which will be, for those of you keeping score at home, the surf volant, which we've already seen on the part of the French, and the British will be played by two vessels. So it, in my mind, we've got a, a meeting engagement where a 50-gun ship of the line and a 64-gun ship of the line have caught up with and are trying to box out a 90-gun ship of the line. That's 50 plus 64. That's 114. That's more than 90. So this is the HMS Barmy, is the 50-gun ship. And the HMS Faffing is the 64-gun ship. So we got two of these guys that are going to have the challenge of taking on one of these 90-gun ships of the line. I believe this is something like a second rate. And, and these are second rater. Is that what you say? And then these two, the 50-gun and the 60, these are more like thirds. So I got two thirds versus a second-ish. Maybe first, depending on how you want to look at it. The other way to look at it, uh, just to think about it, is you've got two, four, you got ten guns here and two, four, six. So that would be twenty-two guns on this one and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, eighteen guns over here. But these guns, I, I don't know. Like just trying to imagine whether or not this is a fair fight. I there's more guns on this side, but there's also a lot less hull on each of these. So I think the, the 90 gun is gonna want to wipe out one of these guys as fast as possible. I know what you're thinking. Sometimes boats bump into each other, and sometimes they meant to do that. What happens when you have a boarding action? And it should be pretty rare because nobody wants to get into that. It's deadly. Well, that's where your Marines come in. Your Marines can fire up to... Up to the great thing about the Marines... So here we see the Surf Volant has two units of Marines. They can fire at point-blank range. So that means if, if you're in if you're in ship ship combat, they can fire. They can also fire at close range, within three inches in our case. They hit on a six. And the nice thing about the Marines, they get to choose who they target. So they can target the command. They might not want to. They, they might want to target the carpenter. They might want to target the, the gunner or the sailmaker, right? If we want to get this guy dead in the water, depending on the situation. They can also target the other ships. See, look at this. Uh, the Surf Alant has two. The, the Barmy has two Marines. When you get into a boarding action, then you are going to roll to hit for each of your crew stars. If there's only one pip, it still counts. Roll a d6. The marines will cancel out. If I've got two marines and you've got two marines, then they just, they're, they're too busy fighting each other. If I've only got one and you've got two, now you get one extra die. Oh, and by the way, if... Let's put some, some conditions on this. The Barmy has decided to board the Surf Volant. Now, the Barmy only has four crew stars, five crew stars. you got to leave somebody behind to run the ship. You're the attacker. You can't bring everybody. So they're going to bring these four plus the two Marines. But let's say they've shot up the Surf Volant. So the Surf Volant is going to be able to use everybody that they've got left. If it's shot up and they've only got three, this may be a valid strategy. I don't know. High risk, high reward. But you roll the dice, and then whoever wins gets to decide whether you stay in combat or not. If you kill off, and for every one you beat the other guy by, I, I, think I should probably review this. I can't imagine it's going to come up, though. I'm really bad at driving these things. But for the record, if you win that combat, 
then it's something like for every extra you win by, you knock out a full crew star. And if you knock off the last of the ship's crew, then they will strike colors and you get to sail away with them. The rules are a little light as to what that means. How many turns do I have to wait? How many crew do I need to move over from my ship to the other? What you like, like, how does that work? I, I'm not sure. So we'll get to that if we get to that. Uh, there are rules for high, high seas, which means that your big guns have like four fewer guns, two on either side, because the, the bottom row down there is going to be swamped if those gun ports are open. There's a one in six chance you're running a high seas. We're not going to do that. It's too much to remember. I think that's good, man. I think that's just about it. Have I missed anything? I don't think I have, other than the rigging. One of these days, I need to glue some toothbrush bristles on there and paint them black just to kind of fill that in. Looks a little naff, but if you've ever seen how I store these vessels, you understand why I don't. They just they, Any kind of rigging I put on these, as good as it looks, it's just not going to last very long. I think we're about done. Man, I'm looking forward to getting this game back on the table. Really, it, with, with two to three ships, should be a quick episode, maybe 30 minutes at most. And again, you can play out an entire massive battle. I, I don't know, may, maybe you could even do Trafalgar. Maybe. That seems like a bit much to me, but you know I'm a solo war gamer, so anytime you get more than 10 uh, units on the board, it's a lot for me. Hey, till till we get these guys on the table, I'm praying for you.